All right, this is going to be a quick video on the S8498, a German Mauser bayonet. Um, I don't have a first model of these. There are three models of them. The first one is just an earlier converted 7481 bayonet, I believe, but it pretty much just looks like one of these. It used to have a muzzle ring that was cut off and there's a bit of a difference in the grip, but the one I have here to start with is an S8498 Mark III, sorry, Mark II. Um, these were bought in sometime in the First World War. Uh, they started off with the longer sawback bayonets that you'll see a lot of other butcher bayonets or the big quill backs, which are the big, big long ones, but they decided part way through that a shorter bayonet was the way to go. So I'll give you an overall look at that one first. Looks like your typical German bayonet. Um, so the ways you can tell the difference between these is there's not a huge difference between the Mark II and the Mark III, apart from the time period they were made in and maybe some slight changes here and there. Um, but usually the best way to tell is by the markings. So as you can see up there, this is a maker's mark. It's a horseman, or probably a lancer, riding with his lance in combat. And then on the other side, we have the name of the maker. We've got Lieb Hammersfar, made in Soilingen. So there are two ways you can tell, um, but also mainly the date on the back. Uh, you can see here on the top, we have the crown over the W, that's the imperial cipher for Kaiser Wilhelm II. Right below that, we have a 16, that's for 1916. And below that is some sort of inspection mark. It looks like a Germanic, uh, possibly a C or something. I'm not the best with the inspection marks, but that's what they are. You'll also sometimes find the inspection mark on the pommel, just above the press stud there. This is on the opposite side. But realistically, there's not a ton of difference between this and the one I'm going to show you in a second. They have the, uh, the grip, um, what would you call it, protector from the muzzle flash. Because on the earlier ones, they didn't have these. The heat of the barrel tended to affect the wood pretty, uh, pretty badly and it would need to be replaced quite often. So at some stage, they added this um, this heat protector pad on, I guess you'd call it, which just slots in underneath the uh, the wooden wooden handles. So this is a nice one. Sometimes you'll find a World War One make that has been reissued in Weimar period service, but usually they'll bear stamps of um, almost like a the Nazi eagle looking stamp, but a little different. Uh, there might be some on that I can show you. So that's the S8498 Mark II. The scabbard doesn't really change a lot. Um, I'll just give you a little look at that. You've almost got this like teardrop frog stud screw there, which holds in the, uh, the spring. And then on the little pommel point, sorry, um, there's another inspection mark. So, We'll get to the other one. This is the S8498 Mark III. Uh, it's not in the best condition. There's a bit of cracking on the grip, which is a shame. Um, one of the main ways you can tell the difference is uh, the Bakelite grips with this crossed pattern across them. They didn't all have Bakelite grips though. I believe towards the end of the war, they did just go back to plain wood like this, but they weren't finished very nicely and you can usually tell the difference. But the main way to tell if you've got a third right era one will be the specific markings on it. So at the start of the war, they, when they were still, you know, trying to cover up what they were doing, they used a specific code. I believe it was an SG something, something. I don't have any of those. They're very early war. This one that I have here is, um, is dated to 1943. 
So once it, uh, so yeah, early in the war you'll see either coded ones or you'll actually just have the name of the producer. Um, sometimes if it's got the name of whoever produced it on there, on the spine, you'll probably have a 40, a 39, a date stamp. But this one, they've bought in codes. So I can't remember for the life of me who this one was made by. I believe it was... Um, it's, it's not coming to me, but um, but yes, so the 43 for 1943 and the ASW is the code for the specific maker of this bayonet. You can kind of see roughly on the pommel there, those inspection marks I was telling you about. So they do look a little bit different. That's just the bottom of an eagle's wings. It's a bit hard to make out because these, this one specifically has been refinished post-war. I'll show you how you can tell that in a second. But yeah, no, apart from the Bakelite groups, the different types of inspection stamps, and also the different blade stamping, it's pretty much, they were also serialized, sorry. It's pretty much not a whole lot different from the Mark II. Um, as you can see, it still has the flash guard on the back of the handle, and a nice dark reddish brown Bakelite color to it, which I really like. Um, the way you can tell if they've been reissued post-war is they'll usually have a separate stamping on them. So you can see there, the original stamping for this number, or serial number for this blade, was 8968. But it has been re-stamped post-war, possibly by Yugoslavia, something like that. Uh, 1616. Also, um, on the scabbard itself, you can see that it's been stamped on this teardrop frog stud. This is definitely a post-war type of stamping, not to mention that the frog itself, I believe, is... I believe it's Austrian or Yugoslavian, I cannot remember. Um, but the bayonet... Sorry, the bayonet scabbard itself... We'll see if I can get this off. Probably can't. You can just see under there. You've got 5801. That was the original... Uh, serial number for this scabbard. Doesn't match the blade. Ones that match the blade usually go for quite a lot more than ones that don't match the blade. And on the back of it, we'll see if we can get a good, no, nah, we're not gonna be able to, but on the same side there, but on the back, you'll have a date with a code for the year it was produced and also by who. Um, also, it's been re-blued post-war this really dark, deep blue on it. It's not that they didn't come like that in the war, but it would almost certainly have been re-blued after the war, uh, considering that it's been re-stamped, reissued uh, with a different scabbard and all that type of thing. Um, there's another, on the bottom of the uh, finial there, there's another Waffenamt, which is the type of uh, acceptance stamp that they used. So the way to tell real ones of these from fake ones is always looking for the Waffen amps. Like I said, sometimes you'll find them on the press stud. You'll almost always find them on the back of the pommel there. Sometimes you'll find them just at the back underneath this, um, the protection guard, just there where the mortise ends. Um, and I believe that's usually where you'll find most of them. Um, I've not seen any anywhere else, but I've only owned a couple of these. That's just a basic overview of the S8498. Uh, I am hoping to get a Mark I eventually, which, like I said earlier, is just a modified older bayonet. So this one here is actually technically the first brand new production S8498 bayonet for the Gewehr 98 Mauser. And I do love these. I mean, the no muzzle ring is such a great design for um, by Mauser. I mean, it's copied through a lot of their bayonets, even the ones they sold overseas. And the reason that they did that is just obviously having a... God, I don't know how much that weighs, maybe almost a kilo, maybe just over. Having that hanging off the tip of your barrel is going to affect accuracy while shooting. 
at a longer range. So they came up with a really ingenious system to mount it with a real deep mortise underneath the barrel, which cuts off the need for having a mortise ring. So it's a really nice system and yeah, thanks for watching.